Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest James, Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Such a needlessly long name. I know, tell me about it. Hello. You wanted it. <laughs> uh, as always, we're wearing togas, it's nice and sunny and today we're going to look at the second king of Rome, Numa Pompilius. Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been looking at the first king of Rome, Romulus, from the foundation myth where he and his twin founded their separate cities on Palatine and Aventine Hills. After being saved at birth by a she-wolf. Mm. Or a prostitute. Mm. I'm, I'm not letting that bit go. Yeah. <laughs> and how he grew his city by offering asylum to runaways from surrounding tribes and communities. And don't forget also stealing the Sabine women. Yeah. Romance was clearly not one of their strong suits. No. They said that was their fault. This is true, the Sabine women did say that was their fault. Yeah, I think... According I don't think to Livy. That, yeah, yeah, I don't think that that's yeah. fair, really, is o it? Also, you can't record the look I just got <laughs> off yeah. Taylor. That's a little bit like saying for someone who's been held hostage, oh, it was my fault, I deserved it. No. I don't, In I'm, that not, voice. I'm not advocating, advocating this, it's just that's apparently what they thought. Are you sticking to the sources? Yeah, well, they're wrong. Mm. And anyway... <laughs> And after all of that, managed to develop and set in place a wide range of social, economic, religious and military policies before being taken up in a thunderstorm to become the god Quirinus. Oh, he was ripped to pieces by the Senate. <laughs> I can't even... There's such different and ridiculous <laughs> things. Are you not used to this yet, James? <laughs> yes, it but it still boils my brain. So, at the end of the last episode... We briefly explained about the interregnum, which was the transition between rulers. So yeah, it was that that was like the little rotor of yeah. people in charge for yeah. like a, like a week or something. Yeah, and you said in that no one stood out. Pretty much, um, but it does seem they hadn't been looking too hard. Okay, because according to Livy, there's one man who actually turned up did stand out from the crowd, as Livy puts it. So, at that time, Numa Pompilius was famous because he was fair and religious. He lived in a Sabine town called Cures, and he knew a lot, as much as you could then. Is that him saying that everyone then was a bit thick? Apart from me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about humans and God's laws. Okay. So, this bloke, was he, was he on holiday? Why didn't he stand Did out? He just cut, he was place? down the back of the sofa or something. Was, was, yeah. was he one of the hundred? He was, no. re he was reading. <laughs> so he wasn't even one of these hundred? No. So they had a big think about it and forgot about him? Pretty much. Right? Yeah, it's off to a good start. This is the it? greatest city <laughs> ever, apparently, isn't it? Somehow, <laughs> not for the actions of these 100 senators. Also, I like the fact that as well as, you know, being a bit bright, they also said fair. So being being a bit of all right gets his, gets his yeah, places. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not too dumb and... He's pretty. Yeah. He was of middling intellect. <laughs> he went to church and uh, he was a pretty nice guy. And they were like, yeah, you'll do. Well, no, they didn't because they went... Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Mm. Anyway, but in all seriousness, or as much seriousness as we can probably manage <laughs> at the moment. No. Um, on this, the reason they may have overlooked him was, yeah, like I said, he was not a Roman. And Livy gives us a bit more. So, he says, when the Roman senators heard Numa's name, even though it seemed as though they were giving power to the Sabines by choosing a Sabine king, they all decided that they should ask Numa Pompilius to be king because no one dared to say that himself or any other tribe member, senator or citizen, was better than Numa. After they asked him, he said he should also ask the gods just as Romulus. Huh. So it's a sound choice. It's a pr it? pretty glowing review there. Yeah, from himself. <laughs> yeah, but so they still consider the Roman and the Sabine separate, even though they're co-kingdoms or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, they, this is why they probably didn't find him in the first place. They were just... You didn't bother to look at, oh, don't we have another city? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. He seems like a reasonable And this choice. is the king to rule both, yeah. Yeah, still, yes. Okay. So, to keep Numa and everyone else happy, the senators and the priests decided to consult the gods to see if Numa should be the next king. How do they do this? <laughs> you, you keep coming up with people <laughs> turning into clouds and, like, saved from being burned alive. I think you're questioning the... 
the credibility of this, James. Also, uh, I, I am. <laughs> it'd be far more interesting if we did use certain things like that now. Don't you just sometimes think that normal law and order is a little bit boring? What, so and it's like burn someone alive <laughs> yeah. to see if they were right? <laughs> yeah, but... Oh, it's we... any more like the fish or, you know, just be a bit different. It's a bit boring, but we arrive to this through all the mental stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, back to Newman. <laughs> Um, so they decided, you know, not wanting to do anything too radical, they decided that since Romulus founded the city after seeing his 12 vultures, they should basically do the same thing. Yeah, so Numa, one of the most important priests, set off to the top of the citadel to look for omens. Do, do they have to be birds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's just any bird. Yeah. It doesn't specify, so yeah, bit of bird watching. <laughs> Not the female type, though. Right, <laughs> okay. Oh, He's quite pretty. He might, he might be able to. <laughs> just once I'd like to get to an episode without having to publicly apologise for something <laughs> you've said. Never, never. Anyway, so lo and behold, they got the omens they wanted and Numa became king. Hurrah! Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no war, there's no murder. Nope. They're just like I went to I went to presumably somewhere quite high. Looked Saw up. a bird. Saw, Saw a, bird. a bird. I'm king. Yeah. I think that that's what we must have used to get Boris Johnson. That would explain a few things, don't you think? Yeah, but he'd shoot the bird. Yeah. <laughs> I would. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, now um it, it, this coronation of New Metal, it is gonna be a bit of an indicator of what's to come next. Okay. James. Mm. So if you want another Romulus kind of scrapping his way to power, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, for the time being anyway. Yeah, it's got to get better than this, otherwise you wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> so. Yeah. so, this city, Rome, yep. that's founded by thugs, yeah, basically. Rough scrappers and badmans. Who invited more scrappers and badmans in. Yeah. Now just ruled by this kind of alright guy. He's clever and good looking and religious. Well, religious, yeah. Do we? Does it mean that he's good looking because he says he's fair? It doesn't actually say anything about him being good looking, does what it? Else it just... Oh, just like blonde, you mean? No, or, like or fair. Yeah, balanced. Oh, I, I read fair as like. Wow, all about the aesthetics, I, isn't it, with Mr. Hill? Look, I know what wins elections. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. said you find Boris attractive. I didn't vote for Boris. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> no, I vote for Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently you had a beard, so there we go. There you <laughs> go. So, beards aside, no, um, you're right. City of Badmans, it's fair to say that Numa is no Romulus. Um, he had a very different approach and different ideas about what should happen to Rome. Uh, and certainly he faced a few problems when he turned up being all peace, love and hippie rather than lads, 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 let's have a scrap. So Libby says... Once he was in charge of the new city, which had been built up by force and military strength, Numa wanted to make a new start with the laws, justice and religious customs. But it seemed as if the people couldn't get used to these things because they were always fighting. <laughs> <laughs> which, gives, which, gives, <laughs> which gives people tough spirits. <laughs> so you can imagine, can you, calm down, hey, calm you down. Look, That's the, like, I'll, look, I'll sort out all the injustices. You stop knocking each other out for 20 minutes. <laughs> Put him down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah, so Livy points out, for Romulus and Billy City on this reputation as scrapping as warriors, um, and the Romans clearly were always up for a scrap. Yeah, but the problem was that if this hot-headed nature and culture wasn't kind of calmed down, then Rome may very well not grow or thrive. Because we're okay. too busy knocking each other. Yeah, <laughs> they, they just like done. get rid of everyone in the city by just knocking each other out well, and there's there's anyone left. Gone? Oh, I looked at my wife, so he stabbed him. Yeah. So yeah, so Newman needs to calm him down and he's got a solution. Does it involve birds? No. Damn. It no, involves... it's the Temple of Janus. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Dave! <laughs> so Janus or Janus is the two-faced Roman god. It's meant to mark beginnings and endings. Um, and he builds it in Rome, but think of it like an armour, a religious armour. It's got okay. these massive doors on, and he says, when the doors are open, mm. we're at war. When the doors are closed, we're at peace. peace. But okay. also, put all your swords in the temple. Yeah. Right, okay. So fair basically, enough. he forces the Romans to lock all the swords away in a temple so they can't go around. Who has the keys? 
Him. Oh, okay. <laughs> of waving him around. <laughs> So yeah, Temple of Janus, Janus, doors open, war, doors closed, peace, he's got the keys, doors take Is it like a cloakroom, do you have to have your ticket to get Pretty your much, yeah. uh, I put in a, a 12 inch blade and you've given me a 9 inch, this is not what I want. This is a blood knife, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> what, what, what the ticket is, it's mate, what do you want? <laughs> so yeah, Temple of Janus. Uh, I won't, I, you know, unfortunately... I've never been in charge of a city, because things oh. would go a lot better if they had done. I would assume if you locked up everyone's weapons, that would encourage other people to come and attack you. You yeah. would, but Romulus had done such a number on the surrounding tribes that they were too frightened to act. So instead, tentatively, they were just kind of waiting to see what was going to happen next. Yeah, they were worried maybe it's a trap. But luckily for them, Numa was more interested in peace. Um, and as always, he had a plan, mm. Libby says. After it was closed, Numa brought the hearts of the surrounding peoples together with friendships and agreements, which stopped anxiety about dangers outside. So the people didn't get into bad habits. Now they were not held down by fear of the enemy and military discipline. He decided to make them afraid of the gods, which was the best thing for the people who were uneducated and simple in those days. <laughs> so you're all done. And that's why I'm going to make you find something that you can't see. I was about to say, mindless superstition. Mm. <laughs> Works every time. I mean, the, the problem with this plan is, how do you make them scared of the gods? I mean, you know, a good flogging goes a long way, but a bit topical now, but play good work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Numa had this cover too, not the plague aspect. He went for something a little... Well, so he knew he needed to do something spectacular to get everyone to go along with his crazy peaceful schemes. Yeah, so he pretended that he had met a goddess called Ageria at night and she had told him to do all of this. What, like the whole Janus lock up yeah. sort yeah. of thing? Went off to Everything. a forest, met this woman, turned out to be a goddess, she told me to do it, so there you go, lads. Is she a known goddess? What's she the goddess of? She's just a minor deity. Yeah. All right. I think he basically just made her up. Probably. So anyway, whether he made her up or not, it didn't really made matter. Because everyone seemed to get on board and they went along with all the changes that he wanted to make. So happy days. I mean, you would have to be pretty stupid or naive at best, wouldn't you, to just kind of fall for that straight away. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Well, I think you would. But well, apparently they all did. Mm. So he's t turned up, he's made all these changes. Yeah. Uh, I kind of thought paralleling um, Octavian, not Octavian, in fact, Augustus, Augustus at that point, I thought Romulus had everything sorted. Come on, James. I mean, you're being a bit <laughs> stupid. So oh, to believe that one Oh my man, God! <laughs> that escalated quickly. To believe that one man could organise and set out all aspects of a city is a bit of a stretch. I mean, I don't know what you're like, but my other half sometimes can't sort out my little boy's clothes, <laughs> let alone an entire city, so... Look, one, you told me he did, so it's your fault, not mine, this if I think true. that. But also, like, one bloke doing it is ridiculous. Two, yeah. Mm. N Numa and Romulus, they can sort it out. Okay, oh, we'll go with that then, shall we? So much, anyway. So much so that the first thing that Numa did was introduce a 12-month calendar based on the moon. It's quite good, really. Handley also built into his new calendar lots of public holidays and days off. Did he invent bank holidays? Pretty much. Maybe, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm turning a I mean, corner on him now. Yeah. Banks weren't around, <laughs> but he basically invented bank holidays. It's one way to get people on side. Yeah. Why should we do this? Day off. Sand. <laughs> um, and remember that priest who went up the hill with him looking for the birds? Yes. Yeah, well, he got to keep his job with a bit of a raise for the rest of his life. So he's got him on side. Yeah, and it became a full time paid job after that. Just being a priest? Yep. Yeah. Right, okay. So this uh, N Numa so far, yeah. is he all about religion? Yeah, he, he's basically. Captain because because he the, the the bird the the bird omens made him king. Yeah, he met some Goddess. woman in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> he built a big temple. Yeah, but it's not just building temples. Livy chips in now with 
Then he started out putting priests in charge of things, but he did the most holy ceremonies himself, especially the ones the priest of Jupiter does now. But he thought that in a warlike community, there would be more kings like Romulus than like himself. Right, okay. So he's, he acknowledges that not all Roman kings are going to be like him. He doesn't want to get to a situation where the king's given all the religious ceremonies to do, but he's off fighting a war. So instead, he makes this priest of Jupiter a full-time and really important position. So Okay. Mm, but there's even more. He does even more. He also introduces more priesthoods, temples, including one Sir Corinus or Corinus or Romulus. Right, okay. So just when you thought you had enough priests and temples... You get more. You get yeah, some more. more. Um, he then puts all these priests in charge of lots of other things in terms of running the city, such as spending public funds, selecting which animals can be sacrificed. Yeah, he builds an altar to Jove, the revealer on the Aventine Hill. The revealer? That sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? I, I, I would build a temple to him. <laughs> He's meant to reveal the omens. He was really popular on a Friday night. <laughs> Just wears a big coat all the time. No. No, Joe the Revealer, he's meant to help reveal the omens. Yeah, that, that's what, If you call it the omens, that's your problem. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to say this next one. <laughs> he also appoints Vestal Virgins to maintain the temples, uh, and he builds them a special area in the Forum, known as the Hearth of the Vestals. <laughs> Is that where they get to see the omens? <laughs> <laughs> The worst thing is, you knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he also formalises and oversees things such as funeral rites to make sure that they are done correctly. <laughs> no joke, <laughs> Helen? No. It's not very funny funerals, are they? No. Uh, how did all the... I, I, I know they won't be called senators. All, all the political... The hundred. Yeah. How, how are they taking this? Apparently quite well. I mean, okay. They've not done a great job of finding a successor to Romulus. They only have five days. <laughs> but doesn't this just mean now that they've just got loads of time off? They've got like extra, pu extra public holidays. That's true. They've not got any jobs to do. They're just like, way! <laughs> Up siege of the revealer. <laughs> God. We almost did it sensibly. <laughs> Never. Uh, so this is also an in rather kind of twee, for yeah. lack of a better term, very English. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's just getting on with it, going to church and all that. Um, does no one fight anymore? Well, yeah, Numa's not, he's careful not to neglect that fighting side of Rome. He doesn't want to completely squash that because they'll get grumpy. Um, although he's not fighting about fighting at all. So instead, he kind of as you'd expect. He creates a religious way of celebrating oh, fighting. for God's sake. <laughs> so Livy tells us... Is it in our moments? He no. also... <laughs> you know, he's got dances! Oh, wow! <laughs> so he also chose 12 dances, the Salian priests of Mars, and gave them embroidered tunics, and on top of them they wore bronze breastplates. He ordered them to carry the heavenly shields, which are called the Ancilia, and to go through the city singing songs and performing their special dance with three steps. How does that make people <laughs> stop fighting? You can't fight, but you can watch this little dance about the god of war. <laughs> don't really don't understand how that would Maybe work. Maybe it's because they get in the way of the people fighting, or just because Maybe they're the so good. good yeah. like, Maybe. Oh. Just all your animosity just dissolves away. <laughs> Maybe this is like the Macarena or Saturday night where everybody else just wants to join in and they Maybe. just all, you right, know, again, start dancing. You'll be glad you cannot see what she's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, they do, a little da they, they do a little dance every now and again yeah. and no one ever fights. Yeah, no, no wars whatsoever. Right, okay. Mm. Um, and yeah, Livy again gives us the following explanation. I went, I, sorry, I thought there was a sting to that. That's actually what happened. Yeah, no wars. No. No wars. <laughs> <sake>. No. <laughs> sorry, James, I know we lured you in here with promises of violence, violence and mutilation, but you've had some dancing, are you not happy? Well, well, apparently I'm not Roman. I'm, no. not, I'm, not, I'm not soothed by a bit of a dance. No, but the Romans were, and Livy gives us this explanation of how the peace was kept. Even their neighbours, who had thought before that a military camp rather than a civilian community had been set up in the middle of them to upset the everyone's peace, even these people now thought it was morally wrong to attack a community that was completely involved in worshipping the gods. 
Okay. Don't punch a nun. Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it also seems that Numa kept off, kept wandering off into the forest that night to meet what then dis- gets described as his wife, Ageria. So, is it this always before some sweeping reform? Yeah, usually. And I've uh, been told to do it. The missus, oh, yeah, her yeah. indoors. Uh, well, her in the forest. Her, her in woods. Yeah, in the <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, again, this is probably why no one dared challenge him for fear of what her in the woods would do to them. <laughs> but either way, whether it was down to her in the woods or the virgins or the Romans or whatever dancing. else was going on or the dancing, it worked because Numa was able to rule for 43 years. That's which right. is a single fight. That is pretty good going. in a good uh, of it. Ancient terms as well, isn't it? Almost unbelievable. It is almost (laughs) unbelievable, yes. You think, hmm, really? So now that we've looked at the story of Numa, it's probably a good point now to start picking apart some of the key themes that really you'd want to be thinking about. Um, The first one is that Numa, as you've seen, is like a complete foil, is the complete opposite to Romulus. He could not be less Romulus it's, if he it's tried. It's very yin yang, like just yeah, mm. completely. Um, and that's probably really important because the Romans like to think of themselves as balanced. They want to be great warriors and soldiers, but the thing that they see separates them from the barbarian hordes is their laws and their piety and their their obedience to greater powers. So Numa gives them that. So you've got the hot headed militarism of Romulus compared to were blended with the kind of passive, staid, steady, legal and religious side of Numa. And again, he is one of these, he's obviously one of these moral characters that Livy says he's going to write about, where he says, I'm going to give you good examples to follow this guy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You want to have a fight? Well, what would you, Numa do? Pray a bit. All right, sorry. So there's that thing we need to pick out on. And that kind of moral example also fits in quite nicely with Augustus as well. I was about to ask, because this is just like the Romulus yeah. like myth yeah. in parallels. This is still being written during Augustus' yeah, yeah. rule. Yeah. Early but also, Augustus. you saw that look in Taylor's eye knowing that there was an Augustus bit career. She, she does, does get quite flush when... <laughs> <laughs> just warm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, uh, is this another way of showing how awesome Augustus is. Yeah, yeah. massively. Yeah, so... Because he, he was never the warrior. Oh, he was. He was. Oh, was he? I don't remember him handing Mark Antony's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... and it, But it's also things like the Temple of, Jan- of Janus. So when Augustus takes power and takes control, he closes the doors on oh, the Temple there. of Janus. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. so that's really symbolic because it's basically him saying, I have brought peace to Rome. Right, I've okay. restored peace. So that's really important. I mean, Livy even mentions Augustus saying he's yeah. the only other one who's been as cool as Numa. Mm. Yeah, but there's another kind of element as well that Augustus also kind of brings in new priests. He puts out laws based on morality, particularly around kind of marriage and things like that. Um, and he also has like the Pax Romana, which is known as the Roman peace. Okay. So that links directly with the fact that Numa was a peaceful leader. So Augustus is very much trying to kind of marry up both sides. So it's like, I'm like Romulus because I'm good at fighting <laughs> and I'm a really good like war leader, good strategist and all these different things. I'm a good politician. But then I'm also like Numa because I'm bringing all of these moral things to make Rome a morally better city and I'm increasing things to do with religion and I'm bringing peace as well. Yeah. So Augustus has got like these two templates and then they're moulded to create the perfect leader. That's how, it's, that's, that's how it's portrayed in okay. the sources, yeah, that's what they put across. Yeah, he's the perfect Roman for tail, definitely. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if we if we can scrape away from Augustus briefly, if she'll let us, <laughs> stop your head. Um, the other thing Numa shows us is it shows this importance of the Sabines to this early development of Rome. Mm. They're not just a group of people who have the women stolen. Um, they are massively important in that it's a Sabine who becomes the second king. The idea is that the Sabines bring this calm and influence. I, I, I was wondering that because you... you we said like he's not a very typical Roman. No. Do we know enough about the Sabines? Was he very, were they very kind of they were quite like, peaceful strict, and pious? And... But they were quite strict and measured. Right. So okay. they, there was a reason why they didn't attack Rome straight away because they were more serious and thought things through. But okay. In the same way that Numa does. 
Is it also apparently. going a bit kind of <coughs> off on one here? But is it also the fact that it's kind of like the the mother and the father of Rome? In that Romulus is like the traditional father, the male, male macho figure, figure, macho, warlike. Numa is more like the mother figure. With so beard. religious, pious, fair, moral, yeah. just. It's, it's, it's that balance. You've got a very high opinion of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> As no, a mum. Not just me. Of all women, kind James. Miss the bit about the beard, though. His beard's nothing on yours, Taylor, yeah. don't worry. Um. <laughs> Stop hitting James. No. Um, the other thing we should look at as well with him being mm. Sabine is it's this positive illustration of assimilation that the Romans at various points, when it suits them, they like to assimilate other cultures. And bring how, them in. how long does this continue for thinking of Roman and Sabine as separate and when do they just merge and become Roman, presumably? It, well, the, the problem is they keep having fallouts. Right, okay. But it, it's not just the Sabines, it's what they did with the Crustomini as well. They merged their people. It's what they start to do throughout parts of the Empire. So when they come to Roman Britain, there's the elements of trying to Romanize them and mix with them um, when it suits the Romans, obviously, mm. not when it doesn't suit them. Then they're quite happy to go, no, you're weird and foreign, go away. <laughs> But if it suits them, yes, so they're assimilated and this idea that um, the, it plants this seed that not all Roman rulers have to be Roman. Yeah. So even though the Julio Claudians, Augustus, they are as Roman as you can get. So was, was, I think you told me once there was an African emperor. Yeah, there are, later on there are kind of North African emperors, but it sets this idea that it does, they almost try and create a kind of a very twisted ancient version of kind of like the american dream mm. you don't have to be roman to be awesome but it massively helps if you're <laughs> a rich roman man so there you have it our quick look at numa pompilius the second king of rome we hope this has been useful and not too distracting uh leave us a comment below and until next time goodbye bye bye